any comments about Renee's career and the impact on the group and a potential legacy, I guess? Yeah, uh, she's going to have a long-lasting legacy, I would think. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some award named after her pretty soon. Um, she's just been uh, just an ultimate professional from the, the first day she arrived to, to, to now. Like her journey has, has been well documented over the, the period of time where she was an elite netballer into a football scenario where just through time and effort and, and determination, she's turned herself into an uh, exceptional leader of people um, a great a great contributor to our games um, last week's game against Richmond just showed that you know she's got so much more to offer it'd be, be great selfishly for me to have her around for another, another 12 months but um, yeah what she's what she's left behind for our younger players is um, exceptional standards and and what you need to, to do to drive to be the best you can out of, of what you've got and um, I have no doubt if she, if she kept playing the game she'd get better again but um, it's even just the way she challenges our younger players at training, you know, Georgie, Prasparkas, they, they go head to head um, most sessions at training and, and the way Georgie's growing off the back of being challenged by, by Renee and her standards is exceptional. So we're going to miss her when she leaves, but she's going to be around, no doubt, but her legacy is going to be forever, forever lasting. Yeah, we'll look into that. We'd love to have her around. I think she's flagged that she'd love to stay connected, no doubt. But um, in what capacity, how it suits uh, her and her family's next, um, you know, part of their their uh, their journey together, uh, we'll work in with her because she's just too good an asset to to leave, um, you know, and not be around us still. Like she's got so much to give, not from so much on the field, but um, her off field, um, her leadership. As I said before, like. We, we need that kind of calibre person around uh, our club and, and the league needs that too to keep growing and, and to keep sort of striving for the right standards. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll sort something out to make sure she's still around. I'm sure she'd love to be around still. Uh, well, being a, well, I like to think a bit of both. Like we've got obviously a, a really high club membership number as well. I think we're over eighty thousand, which is which is brilliant. I think we've just we've, we've got over seven and a half thousand AFLW members standalone as well. Um, yeah, I think the way they've jumped on board, the growth of the the team over the last you know maybe eighteen months, and the way they've changed and developed and playing an exciting brand of footy consistently, which is which is good to watch. So that's a part of it. Um, you know, again, being a regional a regional team with our own own stadium here helps as well. And um, yeah. yeah, I think we're just so blessed to be able to play. You know, in Geelong, in front of our home fans, and to get. I think we're, I'm not too sure what the number was. I think we're fourth or fifth highest in regards to um, you know uh, crowd attendance, but. Um, they make such a big difference. And across the competition, we only had to look at the Sydney and Collingwood game last week in Sydney where they had, you know, five, six, seven, yeah, yeah. thousand there. But it, it just, it's just so much better and it does help the home team. So when we get, you know, crowds of upwards of four and a half, five thousand, it sounds like there's 20,000 people supporting our girls and it's just exceptional and it's, it's such an advantage. So, yeah, I urge all the... Uh, I use this platform to urge everyone to come and watch our, our last home and away game because it's just um, the vibe and atmosphere is is exactly how, what it needs to be. So we're very very lucky to have some have a have a great supporter group. Beautiful. Any uh, possible changes for this weekend? Uh, not at this stage. I think we're going to go into the game um, unchanged at this point. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, every team wants to, to, to play out the season and, and make the postseason, which is obviously our aim. But you're looking back and reflecting on it, you know, the fixturing, how it is, you're playing different teams for different reasons. So to come up against two or three different teams this year, Hawthorne this weekend, we haven't played them before, so uh, hadn't played Port uh, this year at all. So there's, there's always an unknown until you get to go through all 18 teams. So um, to, to play well against Port, 
uh, early in the year to come up against Hawthorne this this week. Who have you know they've won three of their last uh, well, sorry two of their last three games. One of those being Sydney. So again, it's like we need to prepare the best we can against a team where there's there's some significant growth. Um, but you look at you know look at our scores for from this this time around from, to last year we're we're continually breaking records of our own, which is which is important. Um, and the other side of uh, the coin is also we're getting more games into our players. So you know, Claudia Kanjaka plays the 25th game this this uh, this week. We've had four or five milestone games this year. So you know as much as uh, you know, the end result is what everyone's trying to achieve is to, to win the, the, the premiership. It's, um, you know, you, you make little victories along the way as well. So it's all those things count. And so, yeah, we'll, we'll count this year as another successful year um, for a number of different reasons. But ultimately, we want to be playing, um, you know, next week and, and further on. Uh, and our girls know that. Yeah, that's a good question. I think, yeah, as a new coach coming in a couple of seasons ago, you just want to try and instill your philosophy on the on the team. And I think uh, I can see that. We can see that with the way we play. You know, we, we're 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 getting better with our consistency. When I use the word maturity for our group, it's not a negative. It's just like the time together to to grow is is what I refer to. So the more games we play together, the, the more mature we're getting uh, as a as a, uh, a unit. Um, you know, and my and my philosophy around you know combative and, and consistent and, and and all those types of things, uh, we can see it from week to week. So it's not just, I suppose, um, a game where it's hotly contested for four quarters and then the, the strongest and most fittest team wins. We want to play a game where you're doing inside work, outside work, high fundamental execution. Um, high, high efficiency, but then you just accept the fact that there's going to be combat throughout the game, and that's I think that's what we've done over the last uh, season and a half, uh, and it'll be a, a really good challenge against Hawthorne this week to again grow on that because they're the number one tackle team in the competition. They're a hotly contested team. They're young, full of exciting young players. So it's like bring it on this week again. It's just going to be another another opportunity for our girls to show their show their growth as a as a team. Yeah, I guess. Um What's that challenge? Two in a row. Oh, I mean, and, you know, what, what's on the line this weekend as well? Just with all those, yep. you know, um, you know, getting two wins in a row, and then you know, wanting to beat the, the getting a, a big top eight scale. With all that in the background, do you feel this is probably the biggest challenge that you've faced in your time as coach this particular game? Uh, I wouldn't say it's a, a, a massive. In all due respect, a massive challenge. Like we need to win. Like there's there's no hiding the, there's no hiding that we need to win this game. Um, but when you play a series where there's ten games, like every win that you can bank, particularly early in the season, is is like a mini final itself. So we got to a point now where we had to had we had to win last week as well. Like we, we've had to win multiple games this year to be competitive and, and make an, a run for the postseason. So last week against Richmond was you know. If, both teams on four wins, four losses. Um, and we played a brand and an urgency that's showing a spike in our performance at the right time of the year. So for me, it was more looking at last week's response leading into this week where, Rodio, we, the challenge is again, it's, there's a little bit more on the line in regards to do you want to play in, or do we want to play in the post seasons? And the answer is yes. So that's the challenge for us is to, is to kind of repeat last week's energy, not the performance because it's a different yeah. team. Um, but everyone knows what's on the line. Uh, it's just about us, you know, zoning in on the right things that, that help us be at our best. So, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't see it as our biggest challenge from an uh, end-of-the-year result. It's just can we get ourselves in the right mindset again to, to put ourselves in the frame to play our best footy, which we know that the, once the, uh, the processes are right, the outcomes can look after themselves. Whereas with this one, you've really got to take every opportunity, otherwise you can quickly fall down to the bottom of the ladder. 
Yeah, I, I, that's the big, that's the challenge. That's that for me. That's the challenge we're, we're referring to in regards to teams getting getting themselves trained in a way, not just physically but mentally, to be able to ride the ebbs and flows of games for long enough, uh, whether it be round one, round two, uh, or round seven to ten, where you know. Um, performance can wane from quarter to quarter, moment to moment. So the big push at our club and with our program is to be able to ride those those waves of, of, of a game where you're not out of it after the first quarter where you might be down by three goals. Like historically, you might think that's the case because of low scoring, but now there's teams that are, are scoring highly and the, the game's flowing more. It's about riding those ebbs and flows. That's the challenge, I think, that we've been dealing with this season and we've got much better at it. And as I said before, I think we're spiking at the right time where the, the, our frequency as a group is, is all in tune, which is what we're after. Um, yeah. Whereas maybe in that little middle patch of the season, we're kind of um, ebbing and flowing too much as a, as a team and, and leaving it uh, to, to too few to get us across the line. But now um, we're, again, with more time and training and practice, and uh, you mentioned it before, 10 games, it doesn't give you a lot of time to, to, to dive into these um, scenarios. We've had enough learning throughout that middle patch of the year to get to the right time of, of um, tuning in together. So I think our frequency is right. No worries. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate your time. Just one last question, I guess. Uh, just for the five round, uh, what does it mean to you? Do you have any kind of special uh, connection to it all? Do you have any family members or any friends that belong to that community? Yeah, what, is it, what does this round mean to you? Oh, it means it means a lot. It just it means as a community that we're accepting of everyone and, and everything, which is is what we aim to be as people, I think. And we've got, you know, for me personally, I've got lots of friends and family who are, you know, into intermingled with the um, with the prior community. So um, yeah, it's it's a big big week for us. Our, our jumper um, design looks awesome again, uh, and look at the the jumpers across the competition; they look amazing. Um, but yeah, it's just another another opportunity for for people to, to be themselves. And that's what we want as a whole community um, is to everyone to be accepted and be themselves. And I think that's what we're after. And, um, you know, we get, get out to go out, out in the weekend um, and, and play a game where there's no, no barriers on anything, which is, is what we're after.